Well, hello, everybody. My name is Tomas Martinez. How are y'all doing? I am excited to be here. I have 30 minutes because I have to be across town at I-10 and 1604 for a mastermind that I'm teaching. So I want to dive right in. My wife and I own two businesses here in San Antonio. We own Luxury Home Magazine. It's a real estate publication. And we own a school, a Spanish immersion pre-K. And every time I say, uh, tell people I own a school, they always laugh and they go, how do you buy a school? <laughs> and uh, that's a great story, but I'm not gonna get into that necessarily. I wanna tell you about the three decisions that, have, that are the reason why I'm in front of you right now. There have been three key decisions. Now, do you think there were more than three? There were a lot more than three, okay? But I wanna point out three key decisions that I made, and it's the reason why I'm right here. Number one, the first decision. Um, how many are basketball fans? We have any basketball fans in here? All right, great. So I had a dream that I was gonna play for Duke, right? Okay, I was just making sure nobody laughed at that. I heard a, a snicker or two. I had a dream that I was gonna pay for, play for either UT, Duke, but none of them called my senior year, right? But I gotta take you back to middle school. Do you remember middle school? Do you remember basketball tryouts in middle school? Well, I remember it vividly because what happened for me is all the summer of sixth grade, after I finished sixth grade, I was practicing. I was practicing my layups. I was practicing dribbling. I was in my driveway. I was watching every Michael Jordan video that was out there because we didn't have YouTube, okay? We had to get VHS tapes. And I was learning. Well, then seventh grade happens. And what happens in seventh grade? You get an opportunity to try out for the basketball team. Now that day couldn't go by fast enough. I'm sitting in English class just praying that time would speed up so I could go try out. Get to tryouts, I put on shorts, way too short for basketball. Get in line, the coach lines us all up, and we're all at half court lined up. And everybody's in a line, no basketball, we're all lined up. And I'm just kind of sitting there thinking, you know, oh, are we gonna shoot layups? Because if, if it's layups, psh, I got it. Oh, is it gonna be free throws? Psh, got it, it's not even, it's, I got it. Three pointers, mm, didn't have a three point shot then, it was pretty broke, but I was ready for anything else. So as the line keeps moving forward, I notice there's no basketballs, there's no shooting, there's nothing going on, but people running towards the goal. As I get up to the front of the line, the coach says, touch the net. Now this is seventh grade, okay? I'm not very tall as you all have probably noticed, right? I was a lot shorter in the seventh grade. I think I was barely five feet tall if that. And he says, go touch the net. Now in my mind, I'm like, well, in my home court, I can touch the net. This should be easy. So I run as fast as I can, jump as high as I can, and I swing for that net. What do you think happened? I didn't even get close. I mean, I, didn't, I it was, and I land, and I look at the coach thinking like, wasn't that great? And he goes, C team. Anybody know what the C team is? Right? Y'all know what C team is, right? You don't even get a jersey, right? You get a penny. I moved to C team and I remember going over and I, I'm over in the C team corner and I'm looking at the guys with me and I'm just like, oh no, this is not gonna work. I go home or before I go home, my coach pulls me inside and he says, listen, basketball's not your thing. He goes, you're too short. I just wouldn't play if I were you. Just wouldn't do it. Now imagine your coach, you have any, you, got, you're, you just made C team, your coach tells you that. I go home, of course I'm upset, I tell my mom, guess what I'm gonna do mom? What do you think I told my mom I was gonna do? I told her I'm quitting. I said I'm not playing basketball. That's, I don't, I don't wanna play for him. My mom kinda takes me to the side, she talks to me a little bit and she says listen, you are not going to quit before you even got started. You're gonna go back and you're gonna prove him wrong. And you're gonna tell him, I'm gonna prove you wrong. So of course, I'm a seventh grader. You know, my mom told me I gotta prove him wrong. I walked right into his office and I said, I'm not quitting. My mom said, I gotta prove you wrong. <laughs> he thought that was pretty funny too. And he said, it, whatever. I joined C-Team and then the, 
decision that I made not to quit. You see, the, the net was the test for me, right? All, everybody in here, you've had a test. You've had something that you've had to decide. You've had a test in your life. And see, I failed that test, but I had a decision to make. And the decision was, I'm either going to quit and just bag up this whole basketball thing, or I'm going to keep doing it what I really love. And I made the decision to keep doing it. It's the best decision, decision I ever made. Now, here's what happened. I went on to high school. I started as a junior, started as a senior. And then I went on to play college basketball at five foot nothing. Played one year. Now, had I made that decision to quit in the seventh grade, would that opportunity have ever happened? Would have never happened. Decision number two, quinceanera, 1995. Anybody been to a quinceanera? Yeah? So I walked into a quinceanera in San Antonio did not want to go to this quinceanera. My cousin was forcing me to take her to this quinceanera. I walk into this quinceanera with my cousin, and as soon as I walked in, I saw her. I was like, <laughs> saw her. And y'all know what I'm talking about. The guys here know what I'm talking about. When you see that person that you're like, oh. And I told my cousin, I said, I want to talk to her. So my cousin goes, let's go. And I said, no, 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 wait, 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 let's, let's play this out. So all night, all night, <clears throat> this young lady was dancing with this guy, which I assumed what? Their boyfriend, right? That's her boyfriend. And I just kind of sat over by the DJ booth. And if you've ever been to a quinceanera, you know the dancing can get a little crazy. And, you know, and I got out there and I kind of did my little thing a little bit. And then I kind of went back to the stage and I'm sitting there. But here's what happened at the very end of this event. The gentleman she was dancing with walks over by the stage and uh, he says, hey, I, I kind of tapped him. I said, hey, who's that girl you're dancing with? He goes, oh, it's my cousin. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, cool. He goes, you want to meet her? And I said, yes. <laughs> so she comes over. We start talking. And I'm going to tell you this because it's so important. It's one of my keys that I think is, is the reason why I'm here to this day. Who you marry matters. Your partner matters. I'm standing in front of you right now in this moment, and one of the biggest reasons is my wife. I went on to marry her. We've been married 18 years, this, uh, 19 years in December. Longer than some of y'all been alive, maybe. But I want you to understand the decision that I made to marry my wife was one of the single biggest decisions on why I'm here in front of you today. Who you marry matters. My third decision was to start my first company. Now, I graduated from UTSA, and I got an education degree, and I became a teacher. I taught third, fourth, and fifth grade, all right? Here's the thing about teaching. Right now, as I'm standing in front of you, I'm having flashbacks to teaching fifth graders. Not that you're fifth graders, okay? But when you teach elementary, it's like a performance. When you teach little kids, they're literally just everything you say, they're just, and if you care about them and you want to be there, what do they do even more? They soak it up. I loved my job. But there came a point where an opportunity opened. I got my master's degree. I wanted to be a principal. I said, you know what? I'm going to be a principal. I've got everything lined up. But an opportunity came up for my wife and I. We, we became realtors in 2009. And there was a chance for us to start something that didn't exist in San Antonio. And it was Luxury Home Magazine. So real estate, if you ever go, if you go to the HEB right here, it's this really large magazine. And so we had this opportunity to start something that didn't exist. And I want to tell you, because remember when I told you, what was my second decision? One of the best decisions I ever made, what was it? Marry my wife, right? I can tell you this, my wife looked at me and she says, we can do this. And she believed in me. She believed in me, she, and, and to this day she's believed in me more than I've ever believed in myself. I mean, she is that awesome, right? And so she said, we can do this. And we decided, to start putting in place a plan to purchase a business, figure out where we're going to get money, because this didn't exist 
It was basically like a franchise. We had to buy the right to even go start it, right? You think that was cheap or expensive? <laughs> it's not cheap, right? So here's what happens. We, we decide that we're going to do this, but we didn't have the money. And one of the decisions that we made was to refinance. I was a Dave Ramsey. Anybody heard of Dave Ramsey? I'm a big Dave Ramsey guy, right? And one of, one of our decisions was to be debt free. I owned all my cars, didn't owe anything on them, but I made a decision to refinance both my cars. We had two really nice cars. We refinanced them, pulled all that money out, got a title loan, okay, from the bank, got a loan. They gave me all this money, and then I turned and took this money, and I bought my first company. You think that was scary? It was a lot of money. I remember writing that check. It was scary. And not only did we have to write the money for the check, but we had to do something even you know, more, you know, that, that put me in that fear position is then we had to go out and start selling something that didn't exist in San Antonio. It was tough. You think I heard no a lot? Yeah. Every day. How many times a day? All day. Yeah. Okay. Heard no. And then I remember this quote by Les Brown. Any of y'all ever heard of Les Brown? You need to go on YouTube and you need to look him up. Les Brown had a quote. He says, let your no be your vitamins. And let me tell you, those no's became my vitamins. And I just kept soaking it in, soaking it in, soaking it in. And the decision to start that business led to, that business has, has revenued over a million, it's done very, very well. The decision to start that business led my wife and I to buy in our second business, which is the Spanish Immersion Pre-K. Now I wanna go back to my decision with the net. Do you think if I had quit and just given up my dream, do you think I'd be right here? I know I wouldn't. Because once you start quitting, what happens? It's a chain effect, right? It's this domino effect that just keeps, you know, it's just little things, just opportunities don't come about, right? I ended up traveling, doing basketball camps as a junior and a senior because of my decision not to quit. And my decision to marry my wife and to get married. I was young. I had, a, I had this dream, what I called the two for one special. I wanted to graduate and get married in the same weekend. It was awesome. It was awesome. I graduated on a Saturday, got married on a Sunday, was on a boat for a cruise right afterwards. One of the single best decisions. And the thing is, uh, I'll tell you about that decision, is that my wife has always had a dream to be an entrepreneur. That was never my dream. I never had those ideas. I remember that my dad showed me a picture for my birthday. I just turned 43 just this, this week. And he showed me a picture of me cutting grass. I think I was like nine, nine years old. And I remember he was like, yeah, you were really excited about starting your lawnmower business. And I, I, I remember back to that, and I remember him telling me to go cut that yard. <laughs> This was not my idea to make money. I didn't want to make, I just wanted him to give me the money, you know? So my wife's vision slowly started to pass on to me to be an entrepreneur. And so that decision was critical. And the last decision to start our first business has led to me being a part of EO, the Entrepreneurs Organization. It's led to me becoming a John Maxwell speaker. It's led to me being a consultant for an education company for 10 years where I traveled the state of Texas teaching teachers. And this goes all the way back to those key decisions that I made. And so today, as I'm here, we're gonna have time for Q and A. I, 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 I really think the value is in the Q and A, right? But the last three things I wanna tell you that I want you to remember is number one, you need to remember this, it's very critical. Failure is not fatal. Failure is not fatal, okay? You are young. You're young. You have time. Time is on your side. Go out, make mistakes, try new things, learn new things, but don't sit back and go, oh, I don't know, oh, I don't know. Listen, failure is not fatal. Try it. 
Don't be afraid to try something. Number two, who you marry matters. Be very careful and really put that effort to thinking about who you're going to marry, who you're going to spend the rest of your life with. And I know for millennials, and most of y'all are kind of in that millennial or, or the generation right behind that, right? Like the, the millennials kind of have this knock, you know, where people kind of knock millennials like, oh, they don't want to work hard. I don't want to do that. Look, I hire millennials. I have millennials that work for me. And that is not the case. They're not all this. They're not all that. Right? You don't have to be any of those particular stereotypes of what a millennial has to be. But I will tell you this. If you're going to pick a partner, you better be really thoughtful on who you pick. Don't worry about picking someone that makes you look good. You need to worry about picking somebody that's going to constantly believe in you and make you better, not make you look better. It's powerful. It's powerful. And the last one that I want you to be really keenly aware of is, is self-awareness, who you are and gratitude. When you're self-aware, when you know who you are, you know your weaknesses, you know your strengths, when you know what you're capable of, let me tell you, that's a powerful position to be in. When you're not self-aware, when you're, you're not, you don't know, you don't go inward, when you spend all your time going outward and worried about what people think about you, comparing yourself to other people, it's a recipe for disaster. Go inward, know you, be aware. And the last thing, you got to be grateful, everybody. If you're in this room, you are literally living in the greatest opportunity of our lifetime in the entire world going, history is back. This is the greatest time to be alive. The internet has leveled the playing field, everybody. And everybody's got it right on your cell phone. I remember the days of AOL, right? Where we had to pay by the minute. Y'all don't know about the struggle, okay? You don't know. It was hard in them chat rooms when you had to have a time limit, all right? So understand you're living in the greatest time. Failure is not fatal. Who you marry matters, and self-awareness and gratitude are critical to your success. Q&A, let's go. I've got about six minutes, go. Okay, so you manage millennials. Um, mm -hmm. How do you, I guess, talk to them, or let's say they mess up, mm -hmm. and you explain to them without coming off as like condescending? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. So managing millennials, how do you come across as not condescending? Well, no, I think... I would probably say the best thing that I could say to that is I've been in their shoes. Self-awareness. I've had a job and I've worked for people. And I know what drives me up the wall. And I know what, you know, when someone just nags and nags and nags, and I know that feeling. And so I don't look at it as a millennial issue. I don't look at it as a, a managing issue. I, it's a people issue. It's relationships. Right? If someone's on my team, I, number one, I want them to know, hey, we're, we're in this together. Like when you win, guess what? I win. It's, this is, we got to work together. So creating conflict just for conflict's sake is not going to be a win-win scenario. So it's relationships. I, I look at it as, you know, my guys, like Gabe, Gabe's on my team, just hired him out of college. You know, Gabe does all our video. He's amazing at videography. Gabe, when we went to uh, interview him, the number one thing that blew me away about his interview with Gabe is Gabe, my wife says, okay, what questions do you have for us? And he says, what do I have to do to convince you to hire me? My wife stood up, shook his hand and said, welcome to LHM. Right? He had a self-awareness enough to know I need to ask for this. If I want it, I need to ask for it. Right? And he was willing to work for free in an interim basis to try it out. So I'm all about relationship. The millennial thing doesn't really come into play uh, because it's about people. The, 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 so those of you in this room, right, you may be uh, sports, you may be golf, you may be whatever, wherever you're at, the biggest value that you're going to get in college are the people next to you right now. Your paper degree 
It's not going to be the significance of what you get out of college. It's the people right around you, next to you. They're going to start the next billion dollar company or the next five million dollar company. Sometimes I, I remember being in college and just having my blinders on looking for just my people, just my cool folks, right? Take the blinders off. It's about people. Okay, a couple more. Yes. Ooh, that's a good one. How do I, do I, so do, do, does the academics and the experience, does that have a play? Okay, great question. Here's what I'll say about academics, right? Like college is one of those phases of life that I loved because it's, 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 it's really the bonding and the people and getting the degree. It's, it's about completion, right? It's about putting your head down and saying, I'm going to do something and I'm going to come out of this with a degree and graduate. I'm going to do everything that the professor tells me to do so I can get through it. It's the journey, right? And the experience piece, right, is where you intern, where you go work for other people, where you go dabble and find out what you like to do. Now, I'll tell you from an entrepreneurial perspective, here's what I, I feel like. I'm not as concerned about academics as I am attitude and willingness to work. I know a lot of people that don't have degrees that will outwork and have way better attitude than people with degrees and a whole lot of experience. I mean, my first graphic designer that we hired for the magazine, we had 250 people apply. We, I mean, we had stacks of resumes, stacks, people with master's degrees. I mean, all kinds of degrees. What did I care about? Are you going to work? You can have a great attitude. You go with people. The degree wasn't as important. I hope that answered your question. Yeah. Yes. Mm hmm. Yeah. Agents, yeah. So what is, Kelly, what is Luxury Home Magazine? Luxury Home Magazine is a real estate publication that people are trying to sell houses. So they list their house in my magazine. It's on the market. They put it in my magazine so that I can in turn market for them. I take that really big magazine and I print 24,000 copies six times a year. Then those six copies, right, six times a year, those 24,000 copies, of that I direct mail. Y'all know how much mail costs people? It's expensive. I direct mail 17,000 copies to help my agents in my magazine get the biggest impact. So that magazine is showing up on the, in the most expensive homes throughout the city. And all, they're all looking at it. I was in a $5 million house last night in, in, uh, in the Dominion. I mean, this, this house was like nothing you will ever see in San Antonio. It's unbelievable. Okay, five, six million dollars. Crazy house, crazy house, right? The pictures don't do it justice. <laughs> but then when you look at it in the magazine, realtors want to get that in front of the people who could buy it. That's where I come into play. I'm getting it in their mailbox so that they can look through it. Your magazine yeah. Yep, that's what we do. All right, last question. Who's got a burning one you got to ask? Yes. Uh, since you began your magazine, what was the most difficult thing you had to go through until to get it to, where it is? To get it to where it is today? That's a great question. Um, getting it where it is today, I will tell you the biggest hurdle that I had to realize, this is where self-awareness comes into play, right, is I couldn't do it all. This was, this was a, that kind of like that humbling moment. I remember, I know exactly where it was. I was in Austin, Texas, because I own two magazines. I own San Antonio and I own Austin, okay? I was in Austin, Texas, downtown. You know where the W Hotel is downtown, right? I was right across the street in that parking garage. My wife and I are in the car. We, we are fighting to get Austin off the ground, get it moving. San Antonio is cruising, doing really well. And I remember we, at that point, we really only had one employee. It was my wife, me, and one employee. We're running two different magazines. Like you talk about crazy, crazy times. And I remember sitting in the garage and I, I told my wife, I can't do this anymore. 
I was like, I, I, we, I, I don't, this is, this is way harder. Now, we had been doing it for two and a half years, right? So the, 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 the hardest part was realizing and getting over myself and realizing that I need a team. And I started hiring a team. And when I did that, the trajectory of San Antonio just exploded. Um, we, 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 re, more revenue, more, more everything. I mean, it just exploded. Everything just completely changed. And, and I realized that my plates that I was spinning, I was able to start handing those plates off to do what I really needed to do, right? Which is speak in front of people, you know, talk, have this kind of opportunity. Because before, you know, uh, getting a team, I, I didn't have time to do this. It was really difficult. I was trying, but you're running all around and I'm forgetting to build people. I'm forgetting to deliver books. You need a team. You need a team. So I, listen, I want to thank you and I, and I want to offer uh, for, uh, for everybody here, if, if you want more, like if you have advice, follow me on Instagram. I know every one of y'all are on Instagram, all right? Let's just be real, right? You can DM me, ask me a question. It's the Tomas, T-O-M-A-S, Martinez, the Tomas Martinez. DM me a question. If you're like, listen, I have this idea, DM me. If, I love coming on campus. I'm, I, I really appreciate this. Thank you. I love being here because it makes me feel young. I told Gabe, what, <laughs> Gabe, what did I tell you walking in? I said, next year, it'll be 20 years since I've been in college. I was like, that, that was a shock. I, Gabe just kind of looked at me like, oh, wow, they, you're old, you know? Like, <laughs> so I love this. And what I want to offer is the real interviewing class. This will be a good group for that maybe in the spring. I don't know if they're, are y'all gonna, they're gonna all be together in the spring maybe, some of them, kind of, yeah. So I'd love to come back and do that class. But if you can't do that, all you gotta do is go to my website. I actually have it on YouTube. That entire class is on YouTube for everybody. It's free. You can go, uh, to, it's uh, TM3, the number three, impact.com. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate it.